Hello everybody and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about cycloramas, the virtual reality of the 19th century. Now me personally, I really do enjoy looking at structures and different fads, architecturally speaking, from the 19th century because when we look into our history, primarily in North America, we find a lot of structures that they tell us were built at a certain point in time, like for instance, Kingston City Hall in Kingston, Ontario. And I've shown this uh, example in previous videos, but up until even 1910, you could, in the back of this city hall, you could see two rows of windows. But then at some point they created this courtyard in the back, this sunken courtyard, and it exposed this third row of windows. And if you go to the sides of this structure and to the front, you can see a portion of these windows. So there's there was some event in our past that covered this structure with layers of earth and it's not accounted for in the history of this structure and we find uh, like portions of cities with buried levels sometimes they have explanations they being the mainstream but sometimes they don't have any explanation in the case of Leavenworth Kansas excuse me Leavenworth Kansas so with that as a backdrop we're going to talk about this architectural fad with regards to these cycloramas and all a cyclorama is, it's usually like a polygonal building on the outside. But on the inside, what you would do is you would just sort of stand in the middle of it and on a raised platform and there would just be this giant mural, like a, a painting on canvas. And it would be of a scene depicting like a prominent event, like the crucifixion of Jesus or the Battle of Gettysburg, for instance. And that was it. <laughs> That's what they tell us anyway. So I started looking, and I think there's still about, there was 17 of these still around up until 2019. So I don't know what the current count is. So I started looking into these cycloramas and I think Chicago, there was three of these cy permanent cyclorama buildings in downtown Chicago. Pretty impressive looking just on the outside, but you know, I, I really didn't question their function at this point. I was just kind of uh, going over some of these structures and primarily these were located in Europe, North America, and also Australia. And this was one that was in Australia. And this is this particular image is from 1928. So yeah, so they were this phenomena of these structures they uh, could be found in several different countries on several continents. So I was looking into to these uh, cycloramas and I came across this particular one that's in uh, in Belgium, and it's sitting right next to this artificial, uh, conical artificial hill called the Lion's Mound, and it's got this monument on the top, and I, I think this is all supposed to be in reference to the, the Battle of Waterloo, but in addition to this monument and this uh, conical hill, you have this cyclorama, and it's got some arches on it. And also what I noticed is that there were train tracks running right next to it. And why that's of interest to me is because there's another structure that they, that looks very similar to these and it's associated with uh, railroads, railways. And I'm gonna get into that in a second. But uh, so yeah, I started noticing some of these cycloramas right next to train stations and uh, railroads. So this is just another image of this particular cyclorama that would have been back here somewhere. And here's that lion's mound. But I came across another one by Quebec City, this town. There's this basilica here, and there was a cyclorama here. And also, this was a train. I think this railway still exists, but the train station, I think, is gone. So I found an, an older photo, and here's that basilica. Here's the railway. So yeah, you can see the little train station here. And uh, this was an interesting structure. Nice, you had a little antenna there. But uh, yeah, this isn't here any longer. So I, I just started noticing at least some of these cycloramas were right next to these uh, railways and train stations. And I came across one in Toronto. Uh, Toronto had one of these cycloramas, which I think it got demolished in 1963, but it served many different functions over the course of time. Here's the cyclorama right next to a, a couple of train stations and uh, railways as well. So here's just another image. Here's the cyclorama. 
and at one point it was a machinery showroom and here's just a map pointing out the cyclorama next to the old station and today's union station so where i'm going with this is that there's another type of st of structure that also kind of has these arches and it uh, it's next to railways and it's referred to as a railway roundhouse and it's just a building with a circular or semicircular shape used by railways for servicing and storing locomotives now i believe this particular roundhouse is in london england and it got repurposed at one point it was uh, they would have concerts here and i think they renovated it um, i think it's gotten multiple purposes it can be used for but uh, this place still exists but it was only used we're told it was this one was built in 1847 and it was only used for the purposes of storing locomotives for about 10 years and then it became obsolete we're told for that function anyway and so they repurposed it so i started wondering if there might be a connection between some of these cycloramas and these railway roundhouses because when I started looking into these roundhouses, I found that uh, a lot of them, their lifespans were short-lived. And there's this high-speed railway line that's under construction in the UK, uh, referred to as the uh, HS2. And during the construction of this railway line, they're finding all sorts of uh, things that are buried, including they found a buried roundhouse. Now, they didn't have any photographs uh, of this roundhouse which we're told was built in 1837, but they, uh, based on measurements they took on site, they uh, created a model here that you can see in the upper right. But yeah, so they uncovered this roundhouse, but we're told it was intentionally demolished after only a little over 20 years of uh, of use. So I found I find that really anytime anything's buried in the 1800s, I, I'm interested. But uh, during this HS2 project. They're finding all sorts of things buried, including the remains of a Roman town and a funeral site, an Iron Age funeral site. So a lot of interesting things being unearthed, including a roundhouse. And I found articles talking about other roundhouses that have been unearthed, some of them uh, unex unexpectedly. So it's interesting. Now tying it back to cycloramas and going back to cycloramas, there was one that was in uh, Indianapolis. And in this particular image, you can see the Indian, uh, the Indiana State House is shown in the center with the cyclorama building on the right. Now the cyclorama was demolished in 1903 to make room for this Indianapolis Traction Terminal building. So, th you know, this building, uh, it was a major inter urban train station. <laughs> so again, I was looking into these cycloramas and possible connection to these roundhouses, which are associated with railways and trains. And this particular cyclorama gets turned into one of these interurban train stations. <laughs> again, not proof, but it's an interesting connection. And I've got another image here just showing some of the train tracks going into this traction terminal of this Indianapolis traction terminal building. So interesting to me anyway, um, why would they misrepresent what some of these structures are? Like why would they not just call this, a, if it's a railway roundhouse, why wouldn't they just say it's a railway roundhouse? Like why misdescribe it? I can't be certain, but a potential explanation might be that there was a previous, uh, previously existing network rail system in place. Maybe it was partially buried and it doesn't fit the timeline or the narrative for this particular uh, city or this part of the city. So what you could do is you could just relabel it as a cyclorama. Potentially, like I don't know if that's the case. This is sort of my initial research into this. I'm still looking into uh, a lot of aspects of it, but I found uh, some of the connections interesting. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and just even the whole history of trolleys and in a lot of North American cities, these horse and mule drawn trolleys, I, I think it's all suspect, but that's just me. So I think uh, that's all I have to share with regards to the cycloramas, but I want to touch on uh, something that I found in Japan, speaking of uh, railways and uh, things that weren't necessarily photographed, that takes us to Japan. So let's talk about it. Big in Japan. Okay, so 
while looking into railways and railroads, I came across some interesting information talking about the rediscovery of Japan's first railroad embankment. And here's just another photo of it. And this uh, railroad embankment, it was rediscovered in April of 2019 during construction work around uh, a pre-existing rail, uh, railroad station. Now, we're told, according to the official narrative, I believe this embankment, which would have had its own railroad uh, sitting on top of it, it was built in 1872, I believe. And then at some point, they intentionally buried it, covered it all up, and created all this extra land. And it was forgotten about and then rediscovered. Now, I, I find that very interesting because when they looked at historical documents, they were able to infer from these documents that the embankment once existed. So we get this a lot with things from the 1800s. They're rediscovered and then they go back and they're able to infer that they existed. And it very well, the narrative that they're presenting that they intentionally buried this railway embankment it could be the case but i just i find it questionable and japan's their railway system the, the their railway network was pretty much all uh, established during this uh the meiji era this 45 roughly 45 year period of uh, modernization westernization now what's interesting too is like when you start looking at the rapid development of their uh, railway systems you start looking at the photos and you don't actually come across photos you come across these colored prints these wood block prints so there was this process where they would uh, apply color to these um, wood blocks and they were cut in such a way to cast an image onto a print and so you would apply color to the block and then you would apply a, the print to the colored block and it would leave an image and they had several blocks so they could create these uh, these prints and a lot of the modernization that occurred during this period of uh, time the Meiji era a lot of that was captured with these uh, wood block prints as opposed to real photos so here's one of these woodblock prints showing what the embankment looked like not a photo but a print uh, and here's another one so again it's just it's uh it's an interesting phenomena you know you've got this embankment that gets rediscovered in 2019 they're able to infer that it existed and the evidence for its existence is primarily these prints interesting stuff and of course they also had these uh, horse and mule drawn trolleys as well so i guess i'm just uh, we're just questioning things and we didn't necessarily prove anything but i just wanted to share some of these things with you guys i found it uh, kind of interesting so i think that's it for today but until next time take care bye Make it your